that face so misty like the dew at dawn, yet bright with sunshine through the glades and through the leafy boughs. The face that makes me want to forget every day gone by and every day to come. Now I am alive, my eyes upon her face, her widened eyes that opened up the world to me as a lonely stranger in this place. I get bolder as I step up to this thing that makes me stone yet melts my every limb. Standing there with her wispy hair, with the wind that moves the morning air, my arms reach out to touch the beauty that I see. She slowly turns away and runs away with that shiny smile upon her face as if to say, we'll meet another day, another place. When I asked you to bring a book this evening, why did you bring this collection of poetry and why did you read this particular poem? I wrote this many, many moons ago when I was a young lad of 17, exposed to a wild and uh, uh, free love uh, London life. Hmm. You know, as flower children and the, the, uh, the good times. Mm -hmm. So uh, I was influenced by that, you know, during that one year, one and a half years I was living in London. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, I had many encounters, many associations, many affairs, many, many um, um, encounters. And, uh, and uh, they affected me because I was just a boy from Sri Lanka who has not known any of this stuff. And never, maybe had the emotion, but never was practical about the emotion, you know, mm. never practiced it. So I, I was kind of uh, overwhelmed by everything mm. and enjoyed it to the maximum. Mm. And uh, so uh, I had time also to write. Mm. I was alone in London, so, mm. and I was living in a, in a place called the Digs, you know, are you, do, you know do you know London? I haven't heard of digs. Digs, is, those are the place where you, uh, you you rent a you rent a room and they call it the digs. Okay. That was the term those days for okay. the room. Okay. You, you, it's like a, like an apartment house, but mm. in the old fashioned. You mm. know. And outside my window was the was the underground train. Okay. And that noise that noise was annoying from the start, and then it became my theme song. Mm. I enjoyed it, and I couldn't do without it. Mm. And I was influenced by it. And then I should look out of the window and I see the trains going by, underground trains. And then on the other side, there are other windows. And I was wondering whether they have that going on, what's going on in my life. So I was thinking, my goodness, there must be another love affair over there <laughs> and another love affair over there and another love affair over there. So it uh, kind of influenced me a lot. And it, um, I, I, I put pen to paper. And I've been putting pen to paper since then. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chandran Ratnam, thank you so much uh, for coming as my artist uh, this evening. Thank you for inviting me. You are a director, a producer, a screenwriter, all in all a great ambassador uh, to Sri Lankan cinema. You are a lover of planes, a lover of horses. Yeah. You love to drive a good sports car. Yeah. <laughs> but who is the man behind that giant filmmaker, the First giant uh, <laughs> businessman? Who really is Chandran Ratnam? Being giant, of course, is a fallacy. <laughs> but uh, but uh, Chandran Ratnam, uh, I don't know. Uh, I think he's evolving. Hmm. I think I think he's still evolving. Hmm. And he's not really sure. Okay. But uh, but he's enjoying the process, you know, mm. of the evol involvement. Mm. Because I, I, I'm always thinking of new things. Mm. You know, uh, yesterday is yesterday. Mm. Yesterday is good. We learn by it. Mm. But we cannot stop at that. There's got to be something different. Something better, but different. It's got to be different. And uh, don't forget, the new technology has changed our life style and uh, change our business sense, change our artistic sense. It has changed everything and we have the world as our audience. Without this technology, it was, it was only what we saw, on, on our only audience was what we saw. Today, we have the world. Why not make use of that? So that's where I'm going. 
what is your greatest accomplishment in life, not as a filmmaker, but as Chandran Ratna? Having five children, uh, only three wives, hmm. but five children. <laughs> Tarzan the Ape Man yeah. marked uh, one of the first of many Hollywood and Bollywood films uh, that were shot in Sri Lanka. The film very nearly went to Africa, but uh, ah, it yes. came to Sri Lanka. What's the story? Well, I was reading the Variety magazine in Los Angeles and I saw an article that said that uh, John and Bo Derek were going to Kenya hmm. to shoot uh, Tarzan the Ape Man. Hmm. So I thought, geez, why can't they do it in Sri Lanka? So I went to MGM, they wouldn't let me in. Hmm. It's a true story. Hmm. I snuck in. Okay. And I found out where John and Bo had their office. Hmm. And I went there armed with a book, one book, I was hidden. Hmm. Picture book of Sri Lanka. Right. And I, I, I was able to meet them. And I said, sir, this is the beauty of our country. I said, you can shoot. He said, no, but, but Tarzan, it's in the plains of Africa. I said, you're right. It's in the plains of Africa. But also there must be beauty of, of the plains of Africa. We create the beauty. In Africa, it's only a very plain plain. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> and, and somehow we connected. Mm. He said, you'll take us there? I said, of course, I'll take you there. Mm. He said, OK, come on Monday. This happened on about a Thursday. Come on Monday, and uh, we will make arrangements to fly there. And you, uh, you um, get your passport and you know talk to my my production manager. Huh. I was so happy. I went home, invited all my friends, hmm. had a glorious party. <laughs> hey man, I'm going to Sri Lanka with us. And so on Monday I went there. I went to the office. Now they've given me a pass, I can go there. I went to the office and I sat down. I said, can I see them? See, every office has a couple of rooms only. It's a, mm. They're production offices, you know, where, where the studios that you have, a, if you're making a movie, mm. they give you space. So uh, I, um, I said, I want to see. They asked me to come. And here's my passport. Oh, please sit down. I said, yeah, OK. I went there at about 9, 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock. They're not taking notice of me. I said, can I see Mr. Derek? Yeah, he's in the room. He's busy. I said, you know, he asked me to come. Please sit down. I didn't, I didn't have anything to eat. I sat there till 7 o'clock. At 7 o'clock, they opened the door and they were about to leave. I said, excuse me, you asked me to come. Oh, no, no, we have, we have decided to go to Africa. Uh, thank you very much. Sorry about that. Uh, now they are walking from the office to the down the stairs to the parking lot. I am for, I'm following. Mm. But they gave me the script the day before, the earlier meeting. Mm. So I, I went right to the parking lot. Mm. Yak, 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 yak. I said, mm. sir, you, you, don't, you, you must come. You are, they said, bye. I just sat, stood there in the parking lot with this <laughs> zooming car going past. <laughs> Furious. Mm. I said to myself, no, I'm not going to give up. I am going to Sri Lanka. I have the script. Mm. Those days, they didn't have emails and all. Mm. They had fax machine. Mm. No, not, not fax. I'm sorry. Telex. Telex. So I went and selected all the locations. And I think I had the longest telex of all time. Mm. The entire, every location, every scene, I described. Then I called MGM and I said, where in Kenya are they? They're gone to Africa now. Mm. Oh, we can't give you, we can't give you their uh, address. I went to a travel agent. I found that there were five five-star hotels. I sent this telex to all five. Bingo. Mm. I got a call at about 11 o'clock at night. Mm. Chandran, we read your telex. You really have the stuff? Mm. I said, sir, we have the glorious stuff. He said, we'll be there tomorrow. They flew in there. I showed them Udwata Kale. I showed them the beauty of my country. And we got the deal. Beautiful story. The entire film was shot there. And they are still my friends. 
the creator of Jurassic Park and the creator of Star Wars, two people who have changed not only the landscape of cinema, but uh, the world itself, one might say, namely Steven Spielberg and George Lucas. Now, they come to Sri Lanka looking for a particular gorge yes. uh, for Indiana Jones, the Temple of Doom. Correct. Uh, but ends up shooting the entire movie entire, in Sri Lanka. Uh, entire location movie. Right. The location stuff. Okay. The interiors, they did at L Street Studios in UK. Hmm. But that how was, come? They came yeah, to look for a gorge? That's, and that's, that's, that's another story. You know, uh, um, I heard that they were going to make a movie. I gave him a call. They said, yeah, yeah, we are, we are shooting in India. He said, okay. Uh, I've done that a few times. Huh? Okay. Uh, this is one of the times I succeeded. And um, uh, I said, yeah. He said, he said, no, we're looking for a gorge. Hmm. I said, uh, I knew what a gorge was, hmm. but I'm not familiar with a gorge. I said, yes, sir, we have gorgeous. You didn't know? I, of course not. <laughs> <laughs> so then I went to my boys and I said, hey, we have got to find a gorge. He said, sir, George? <laughs> this, my guys had never heard of a gorge. Okay. I said, nah, nah. And I described mm. in singular. I got them down. Mm. I got Stephen. I got uh, um, George. I got Kathleen Kennedy, who is head of... Uh, Disney today, mm, head mm. of uh, Lucas Films. Right. She's the chairman now, you know. Okay. She, she was an assistant to uh, to uh, Stephen. Stephen. So they all came. I put them in a helicopter. I got my friend Oliver Ranasinghe, who was a commander, of, uh, who was a pilot then. He later became the commander of the Air Force. Mm. I said, Oliver, you got to find this gorge. <laughs> I said, I don't know where the hell it is. <laughs> he said, Don't worry, we'll go looking. I have an idea. I went everywhere, and then coming over the Victoria Dam, they were constructing the Victoria Dam. Just over that, there was a gorge. <laughs> and uh, Stephen looked at it. He said, can we come go down? Hmm. I said, yeah. I said, so we went down, the helicopter, got off, got onto the bridge that they were building, uh, the Victoria Dam partially built. Mm -hmm. And he looked at it. He said, marvelous, this is it. Hmm. So we packed up. We went to, uh, we went to the, um, back to the hotel, O'Broy Hotel. Hmm. We went there, and uh, uh, by the, uh, I had called him, and I said, uh, "Get a sweet for St this is a funny one. Mm. Get a sweet for Stephen, mm. you know, and have some flowers and chocolates. He loves chocolates." Mm. And then we come back from candy, mm. and and I go to the reception. I said, "Mr. S Steven Spielberg's key, please." Mm. Now they are talking while I'm getting the key for them. Mm. Oh, he's already in the room. Mm. I said, "No, no, no." Me, me mm. He said, no, no, he's already in the room. So I didn't want to argue, right? Mm. So I said, okay, get me another room. Mm. I was furious. So I got another room. They were going to stay one night. Mm. And then I took him up into a normal room. Okay. <laughs> you know, maybe a deluxe room. Mm. And I got everybody situated and I said, what is the other room number? There where you say Spielberg mm. is in. Mm. Give me the room number. It was a suite. I went there, knocked on the door. The guy opens the door and says, Chandran, you didn't have to do this for me. I said, what? He was the freight guy. <laughs> His name was Seberg. <laughs> he was the guy who was handing the freight. Okay. He's got the flowers and the chocolates. So I didn't say anything. What has caused the mix-up? Huh? What has uh, caused you know, the receptionist? Seberg, Spielberg. You know, they right. were just confused. But uh, Stephen never knew about that. But later on, when we became friends, I told him that story. <laughs> A lot of nice things. And then, we were in the hotel. Now, they are shooting in, in Jaipur, right? Mm. They are building mm. sets. Mm. So, I heard the phone conversation. Talking to, uh, Stephen was talking to Robert Watts. He's the, he was the producer. Mm. Wonderful man. Uh, is, um, God, they are saying that you can't use the word Maharaja. Mm. I'm listening to this. Then he got another phone call from the guy in India. They're building. Mm. Production manager there. All sets are being built. Mm. Uh, they can't use the word thuggy. Mm. I said, Robert, you can use any word you want here. Mm. He said, this is going to be a problem. I said, yeah, there's not going to be a problem with us. Whatever you want, I will give you. Mm. Stephen. Listen to Chandra. Hmm. We had a chat. Hmm. Cancel the 
stop construction mm. on the phone. Mm. We are going to do it in Sri Lanka. <laughs> right? Mm. Bang. <laughs> Bang. That's how it happened. That's how it happened. Have you ever been in front of the camera in Hollywood? Yes. Yes. Mm. I did. Mm. Uh, we did a film called The Key. Right. So, uh, soon after we, we uh, uh, Bijan River Kwai, mm. I worked there nine months mm. and the entire team went to London and Hollywood. Mm. And they said to me, Cecil Ford, the production manager, if you ever come to England, mm. give me a call. Mm. I said, okay. Mm. They went, I also went. Mm. <laughs> and I gave them a call. Mm. And uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, Chandan, we are making a movie. Uh, come down in Portsmouth, down south. I said, thank you. And then I got into a train mm. and I uh, went to uh, Weymouth mm. and uh, uh, near Portland and I was in the bus stand. I had come by train, I was in the bus stand to go to, to Portsmouth. Mm. S I heard my voice, uh, somebody mentioned my name, Chandran. I thought, what's going on? Mm. I looked, I see a Rolls Royce. Mm. and a face sticking out. Mm. Come here, what are you doing here? Mm. It was William Holden, the actor on Bridge on the River Kwai. Right. I said, I'm going to make, I'm going to be working on a film. I'm also going to be working on a film. Get into the car. Right. And he took me and said, look what I found in the bus stop. <laughs> 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 and then they knew that I had a relationship with William Holden. Mm. Bigger star of that time. Huh? Yeah. Bigger star. Uh, so they put me as a production assistant, taking care of him, mm. you know. And then uh, uh, Carol, Sir Carol Reed was the director, mm. and the, Sophia Loren was in it. These are big names. Yeah, Trevor Howard. So uh, it was about a ship, a tug that goes and brings in the, the damaged uh, um, ships, mm. and it's shot in the uh, in the in English Channel. Okay. So we worked on the little tug right. for year for for days. Mm. So. Carl, I met a wonderful man called Carl Foreman. He was a he was a, uh, a great producer. He was blacklisted in Hollywood, so he went to England. Mm. So he said, "Chandran, you want me to a few bucks? Mm. Put on a uniform, jump into the. You can swim." Mm. I was not sure that I could swim. Okay. I said, uh, "But you're wearing all this, uh, you know. Mm. Yeah. Jump into the water, mm. right? You, you can make uh, ten pounds okay. on a jump." So I, 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 I kept jumping into the water. Right. And every time you jump into the water, they come and pick you up. Hmm. And they give you a shot of rum. Right. I did about 10 jumps. I didn't <laughs> care whether I could jump or not. <laughs> and then they, he, he liked me and he put me as an extra in a couple of shots. Yeah. Okay. That was your actor debut <laughs> in Hollywood. <laughs> not, acting, not acting at all. You wrote, according to Matthew, 20 years ago. Yes. Uh, but... The real father, Matthew, was not so fond of the script that you wrote, and That's then right. you had to shelve it. Um, no, I didn't, I didn't. I didn't shelve it for that reason. He scared the hell out of me. Yeah. He said that he will sting you like a scorpion. Yes, yes. yes. Okay. He came up to me and said that. He said, "You know, anybody who crosses me, I will sting like a scorpion." I said, "Father, I have another appointment," uh, <laughs> and um, you know, and I never went back. Hmm. But he was my pastor hmm. and my friend. But uh, what made you take it up again and make a movie out of uh, it? 20, 20 years, 20 years later, I, I uh, bumped into Alston Cox, okay. uh, my buddy. Okay. And uh, we were in London together and uh, he had read the script. Hmm. And he's keeping it to himself. He, he would have liked to act in it, I think, at okay. that time. And he never mentioned it to me, but mm. uh, we uh, we were horsing around, and we went to a nightclub mm. in, in 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 Soho. Okay. And you know those nightclubs where you know women come and sit with you, and they open a bottle of champagne whether you order it or not. You get ripped off. You get mm. ripped off. So we got we were getting ripped off, mm. and uh, we refused to pay for the champagne. Mm. We didn't order it, but the two girls were all over us, mm. and uh, and then. Uh, <laughs> Alston got a, uh, there's some big guy came, a big black guy came. With a, okay. Um, the tough guy there, right? Uh. He came and said, you got to pay. Mm. And Alston uh, was quiet. He suddenly got up. Mm. You, do you know who I am? 
and he put on a performance. He was auditioning for me. <laughs> and I've never seen him do anything like that. Hmm. Anyway, we got out of that mess. Hmm. Okay. okay. <laughs> and we took off. Hmm. <laughs> we took off like that. Okay. And uh, then I said, Nelson, what the hell? No, what, what do you think of it? Hmm. I said, you're damn good. <laughs> then we talked about Matthew and then uh, it kind of went that way. Oh. You know. <laughs> so he was the reason why you thought of doing it again? Not the only reason, but he had a very major part to play in it, okay. in the whole movie. Not only acting, he, he also uh, 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 introduced me to, the, uh, to an investor who invested okay. in the film. He also uh, um, suggested that we get Jacqueline. So I would give him a lot of credit uh, for that movie. And I'm glad he won Best Actor at the OCIC. Okay. You know? mm. So he's rewarded. <laughs> <laughs> what is the greatest strength of an actor in your opinion? It's got to be a passion inside. A lot of people have that. Mm. It's not a very rare thing. Mm. They have it within them. We all have it within us. Okay. Uh, but the degree of passion is what determines whether you're going to go forward or not. And the third most important thing, luck. <laughs> In casting, the most predominant thing is luck, that you happen to be there. Like my wife uh, went to a play with me and saw Ashan in a play. Mm -hmm. And she said, that's a great actor, luck. That's the main thing. I'm looking beyond the borders of Sri Lanka. Mm. In my productions, in, in all my thoughts are not just here. Mm. I'm, I came back here because I love my country. I'm going to live here. Mm. But we are going to take Sri Lanka to the world. Mm. Not just be here and talk about mm. Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka, Sri Lanka. Mm. You know, Sri Lanka to the world. Mm. And that's how it should be. Because we have the, I don't want to get on to the story of Sri Lanka, but you know it more than I do. But this is the greatest piece of land that God created. Look at the map. When I arrange the map, I put Sri Lanka in the middle. So you look at the map. Mm. You can adjust the American part. <laughs> mm. You know, we are in the center of the world. Mm. And we have a size that is manageable. You know, good future coming, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't cut that, don't cut that. You know how much it costs me? I make a movie where you are not going to get up and go to the washroom. Your movie is as good as the people you have around it. You're waiting to go to Hollywood. No, Hollywood is here. Hollywood is a state of mind. One of the few guys who turned Francis Ford Coppola, the director of uh, Godfather down. I have not finished my work yet. So I have a lot of plans and I'm going to make them all those dreams come true. Love. 